Hi everyone, in the second ecology video lecture, we are going to specifically be looking at ecosystems and we'll be considering the following question, which is how does energy move through an ecosystem? And in order to answer this, we're going to be um, thinking about the different um, components of an ecosystem and uh, then we'll be thinking about how energy flows through these different components. Just as a reminder, uh, we mentioned this in the last video, but an ecosystem uh, encompasses both the organisms, and this is going to be multiple populations or multiple species of organisms that live in a defined area, along with the non-living uh, components of their environment or the abiotic environment. And when we're considering these organisms, uh, when we're thinking about ecosystems in general, it's important to note that the distribution and the number of the different kinds of organisms we'll have, that'll, that, that'll be determined by you know, th things that are alive. So how much food is there? How many predators are there? Other biotic factors, but also abiotic factors. So you could think about uh, for a marine environment, maybe how much dissolved oxygen is in the water or maybe the temperature of the water. Those abiotic factors would also have an impact on the distribution and abundance of organisms. So we'll be um, thinking about things like that. And then we'll also be thinking about how energy and also elements. So this could be nutrients like minerals that maybe could be in a rock and then end up as a nutrient for a plant and then move up into a, a um, consumer, how that's gonna flow through an e ecosystem. So one big uh, classification that we can make for the kinds of organisms that will exist within an ecosystem is gonna be um, made based on how they obtain energy or how they, how they get food. One category is going to be producers, and producers are going to manufacture their own food, their own sugars. Uh, the vast majority are going to use photosynthesis, but there are some bacteria that can use um, chemicals to make their own food. But essentially, they're taking uh, sunlight or the energy from the sun and turning it into sugar, and then they've they've therefore made their own food. So producers are going to be at the bottom, sort of at all of these. They're the base of all of these ecosystems. And then from there, the other category is going to be consumers. A consumer is anything that's going to eat other organisms in order to obtain its food. So it could be eating the producers or it could be eating other consumers. So this category is going to include herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, scavengers, detritivores, and decomposers. So even if the food that they're eating is already dead and they're just breaking it down, that's still eating other organisms to obtain the, the sugars, the, the organic molecules. So two categories, producers and consumers. Okay, so one way of modeling what a, an ecosystem looks like in the most simple way is to use what's called a food chain. And a food chain is just a single straight line sequence of who's eating whom in an ecosystem. And so for each uh, level, we're only gonna put one organism. So an example is here where we've got leaves and then that's the producer since it's making its own food. It's, uh, you know, photosynthetic, photosynthetic, it's a plant. And then from there, the leaves are eaten by a cricket. And from there, the cricket's eaten by a robin. From there, the robin is eaten by a hawk. And so we, this would be an example of a food chain because there's only one organism at each level. And food chains and food webs and all the other kinds of uh, structures that we'll be looking at can start also with a uh, dead organic matter. So even if the leaf is dead, it used to be photosynthetic, so it's still a producer. But these dead organisms can be eaten by archaea, then eaten by earthworms, then by robins, then by hawks. So we can start with living or dead matter as the sort of base of the food chain. And we'll use words, um, we'll specify what kind of consumer we're talking about at these different levels by using primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary to describe um, what sort of level they're on. So the producer is always just primary producer. And then the thing that eats the producer is a primary consumer. The thing that eats the primary consumer is a secondary consumer. And the thing that eats the secondary consumer is a tertiary consumer, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's another example over here with phytoplankton, which are little photosynthetic organisms that live in the water. They're eaten by a primary consumer, which is zooplankton. And this would be an herbivore because they're eating a producer, but also a primary consumer because they're eating a producer. 
And then from there, secondary consumers, which would be carnivores, tertiary consumers, also carnivores, quaternary consumers, again, carnivores. And then the last thing that I wanted to note on um, this slide is that you'll see this little number over here that says trophic level and i've also this title this slide is titled trophic structure and trophic just refers to um feeding or the intake of nutrients so this is really just talking about feeding structure that's what food chains are all about and the trof trophic level refers to how many steps away an organism is from the base of a food chain and so the first trophic level is just going to be the produce, the primary producers. The second level is the primary consumers. Third level is secondary consumers and so on and so forth. But what it's really just saying is how many organisms are there in this chain? So for here, we've got one, two, three, four organisms, and we've got four trophic levels. Here, we've got five organisms, so we've got five trophic levels. Um, over here, one, two, three, four, five, again, five organisms, so we'd have five trophic levels again. So in reality, um, I think you guys probably know that that ecosystems and the organisms that are in them are not, they don't have this simple of a relationship. In reality, a lot of, you know, organisms are going to be eating more than one thing and they'll be eaten by more than one thing as well. So to model this um, more complex relationship of interactions between species, we can use what's called a food web. And so this is a diagram that's showing all of the food chains and their interconnections within an ecosystem. So we can see that a rotting log might be eaten by a fungus and bacteria, and these bacteria are going to be eaten by millipedes and earthworms, which are going to in turn be eaten by robins and alligators. So all of the interconnections within uh, an ecosystem. And the complex thing here, or the tricky thing here, is that when you start adding all of these arrows, a single organism can have multiple designations. So this uh, bird is eating a producer so it's eating this cactus so that makes it a primary consumer but it's also eating this uh like mouse looking thing and the mouse is a primary consumer because it was eating the plants and then it's getting eaten by the bird so in that sense it's the secondary consumer so each organism in a food web can have multiple designations for what what it might be and then the other thing that I want to mention for this slide is to pay careful attention to the arrows and the direction they go for these food webs and food chains. The arrows should go from the prey to the predator because it's showing where the energy is going. So if a cricket is eating a leaf, then the energy is going from the leaf into the cricket. And then if the cricket is eaten by a robin, the energy is going from the cricket to the robin. So think about the, the arrows as showing the direction that the energy is flowing. And this is going to move us to our next slide about energy flow through an ecosystem. So when we're thinking about this, the energy is going to flow in one direction. So it's going to go from the producers through the consumers. So since it's starting at the producer level, ultimately all of the energy that's entering a food chain is going to enter through those producers and it's going to be starting off as solar energy and those producers are transforming it into chemical energy. And the thing is, at each trophic level, energy is being lost each time you go up a trophic level. So say from a primary consumer to a secondary consumer. Typically, about 90% of the energy is going to be used by that organism in a particular trophic level for respiration, for metabolism. When an organism is living its life, it's, it needs to use energy, right? It might be doing active transport. It might need to keep itself warm. It's going to be moving around. Um, and so just moving your muscles is going to take energy, and that energy is going to be used by the organism. And when this happens, it's, it's not being put into the organism's body. It's just being lost not to the universe but to the food chain and so only about 10 percent of energy that's used for actually growing the organism's body or making things like eggs only the structures that can be eaten by the next level are going to be accessible to the the next trophic level up so 90 percent is about the the general rule about 90 percent is lost 10 percent is going to be um, available for the next level so this is pretty inefficient um, and we've got a picture here. 
So you can graphically or schematically represent this using what's called an energy pyramid. Um, sometimes they're drawn as ecological pyramids or trophic pyramids, but it's a diagram that shows each trophic level as a separate um, compartment. And they're stacked in the order of, you know, starting with producers and going up. The size of the compartment is proportional to the amount of stored energy. So these two diagrams are showing um, showing this, showing this energy pyramid. So we've got uh, the greatest amount of stored energy in the bottom level or the primary producer level. And you can see that in both of these. And then as you go up to the consumers, we get uh, subsequently smaller and smaller amounts of energy. So this one is looking at energy in terms of joules. This one's looking at it in terms of um, calories, but the, the theme is the same that as you go up in level you're going to have fewer and fewer or you're going to have less and less energy available in that level and again that's because about 90 percent is going to be lost in this organism's lifetime so the snail is going to need to use energy to move around and make its slug slime and do other slug things slug active transport and that energy is not going to be available to the frog so when the frog eats the slug all of the energy that the slug used to do active transport, that's not gonna be taken in by the frog. That energy is lost to the ecosystem. Okay, so that is uh, the second video about ecology and I will see you all later.